Shalom, all praise due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to all you brothers out here, pushing the word of truth and sincerity, my name is Rapa Ma. alright, so I'm coming with this video now, and it's about anti-Semitism, so-called, and um, why this phrase is constantly being used on, as a disclaimer, if you're not interested in hearing about the truth or a different viewpoint about what the world calls anti-Semitism, turn it off. If it's illegal in your country to speak of against so-called Jewish people, turn it off. Um, if you're sensitive or triggered by any type of um, new information concerning the people who call themselves Jews today, or Jewish today, turn it off, because that's exactly what I'm going into, and um, the world hates it, the world doesn't like so-called bigots and bias statements, and um, to the point where they'll root out the truth because it sounds biased, or they'll root out the truth because it sounds racist, or they'll root out the truth because it sounds sexist, they just, majority of people on this earth today is very sensitive, um, they have something called PC culture, all right, um, PC, uh, I think, standing for, um, I forget, politically correct culture in which people don't like to speak about things, certain things. Some things is past, gets a pass. Some things don't. Uh, mainly anything about racial issues don't get a pass. Anything about sexist issues don't get a pass. But uh, here at GMS, we like to teach the truth. And the Bible tells us that there's separations of nations, separations of sexes, separations of um, intellect, separations of jobs. You know, in this using discretion, we're going to go into certain things now. Um, right, the last, the only video I might add, the only video I've ever got taken down off of YouTube was a video on so-called Jews. And I've done over, I want to say around uh, uh, at least 150 plus videos. You're telling me the only one that's ever been taken down was on one subject, and that was on so-called Jewish people claiming to be the real Hebrew Israelites and um, trying to verify that or bring up proof that that is incorrect. And that video was taken down abruptly, I mean, within the hours. So we're going to try it again. And um, so I have this word anti-Semitism. When you type it up, you get automatically... A whole list of things, especially news, okay? That's the hotbed news word right there, anti-Semitism. We're going to find out what it means according to um, etymology and according to today's definition of new speak, new terms, terms, old terms with new definitions. <clears throat> anti-Semitism is one of them. You see here Einstein warns of German anti-Semitism 10 years before Nazi rise. You see Trudeau, Trudeau. Who's the uh, prime minister, I believe, of Canada? Break silence on anti-Semitic attack in Toronto. You see Facebook, New York Times report Zuckerberg used anti-Semitic attacks. Okay, plenty of uh, information here or news articles going against people who use anti-Semitic language. So I won't be surprised if this video gets taken down right right away. So. Now we have here a definition, our first definition, it says, this is from Google, hostility to or prejudice against Jews. Hostility to. So you could be, if you're hostile towards the people who call themselves Jews, you're anti-Semite, according to this definition, or if you're just prejudiced against them. Okay? Now, anti-Semitism, Wikipedia says, is hostility to prejudice or discrimination against Jews. A person who holds such positions is called an anti-Semite. Anti-Semitism is generally considered to be a form of racism. It has also been characterized by political ideology, which serves as an organizing principle and unites dis dis disparate groups which are opposed to liberalism. Okay, skip down. Uh, causes. Let's check out the causes. Anti-Semitism has been explained in terms of racism, xenophobia, projected guilt, displaced aggression, and 
the search for a scapegoat. Some explanations assign partial blame to the perception of Jewish people as an unsociable, as unsociable. Such are uh, a perception may have arisen many Jews by many Jews having strict kept strictly kept to their own communities with their own practices and laws. It has also been suggested that parts of anti-Semitism arose from the perception of Jewish people as greedy, as often used in stereotypes of Jews, and this perception has probably evolved in Europe during medieval times where a large portion of money lending was operated by Jews. And it has here the citation for that would be a book called The Changing Face of Anti-Semitism from Ancient Times to Present Day. 2006 Walter LaCour okay so there's a history of money change and money lending from from Europe right this is where we get the modern day Rothschild family all right who uh Rothschild was a uh, of the father was Maya Amschild Bauer named changed his name to Rothschild Red Shield which is German for Red Shield and uh, where they, he set up his five sons to start banks in different um, main cities and as a hub in different cities of Europe, across Europe, London being one of them, Frankfurt, I think Germany and a few others. And, um, and that, oh, that's what they did, lend to countries and extort countries, extort kings, um, started wars and... Um, and uh, use use tricks to become the richest, most elitist family in the entire earth right now. The Rothschild family, Jewish bankers, money lenders, says factors contributing to the situation included that Jews were restricted from other professions, while the Christian Church declared. Salaki, this is supposed to be off right now. It says, uh, while the Christian Church declared for their followers that money lending constituted immoral usury okay this all came from this this conversation you know this topic came from a video called so-called jews can no longer run from the truth it's one of the highest videos of gray millstone with about three hundred and eighty thousand views and uh one of the comments in the comment section last week it says in fact slavery was their business so you know we was claiming we made a claim in a statement a brother made a statement in this video that you so-called jews had a hand in slave trade now here's the thing they say anti-semite anti-semite which shem the word semite goes back to the word shem shem was one of the progenitors okay that came from the seed of abraham and he was one of the progenitors of many different nations of people today most notably Moabite Chinese most notably as a matter of fact the Israelites who are today Negroes Latinos and Native Americans that's our claim um, who are the Shem also out of Shem came um, Esau the Edomites all right who the Jewish encyclopedia of the early 1900s tells you that Edomites were the Roman Empire or the modern modern jewelry is of Edom, so that's from their encyclopedia, all right. Meaning uh, there's another encyclopedia that says um, Edom is of the Roman Empire, so we know who the Edomites are, and uh, they're also Shemites and um, so-called Japanese who are Ammonites are also Shemites, Ishmaelites who are so-called Arabs are also Shemites according to the Bible. So this is all people of Shem can technically call themselves Shemites and they are people who cannot be against themselves so in order to be anti-Shemitic or Semitic you have to be of a nation outside of Shem one nation of Shem cannot be Semitic or anti the other nation of Shem that would be just racist it has nothing to do with Shem you know so the comment here, going back to it, says, in fact, slavery was their business. It says, look up Aaron Lopez. And that's exactly what I did. When I looked up Aaron Lopez, I get Aaron Lopez slavery. You get 
his Wikipedia page. Okay. Click on that. Takes you to his Wikipedia page. Aaron Lopez, born Duarte Lopez, was a Portuguese Jewish merchant, all right, and philanthropist. Through his varied commercial ventures, so he's in the commercial ventures, all right, trade, he became the wealthiest person in Newport, Rhode Island, in British America. In 1761 and 1762, Lopez unsuccessfully sued the colony of Rhode Island for citizenship. So he's not a citizen. He was a Portuguese Jewish merchant. Let's find out what he sold. Business. Lopez, shopkeeper in New York, boo, 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 Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lopez doubles and competitors with New Whalers. All right, Lopez, his trade beyond, expanded his trade beyond the North American coastline and by 1757 had major interests in the West Indian trade. How do we know that? It's citations. Chappies, Chappies, uh, page 58. Okay, go look up that later. He also sent ships to Europe and the Canary Islands. Why? For slaves. Slaves from Europe, slaves from Canary Islands. Between 1761 and 1774, Lopez was involved in the slave trade. This is a so-called Jewish man involved in the slave trade. As you see here, Portuguese, Portuguese Jewish merchant involved in the slave trade. So when we say things like, uh, well, you so-called white people, you was uh, a slave, you know, you was involved in the slave you know, when we say that you were involved in the slave trade, here's the proof, man. Are we anti-Semite for bringing this truth out? Is Wikipedia anti-Semite for including truth? Is this biased, what we're saying, when we say that so-called Jews had a hand in the slave trade and they never paid for it? <laughs> but they they want the, the uh, people of German descent who are descendants of the SS in some of the still living SS soldiers to serve uh, time in jail, life, life sentence, sentences at the end of their life. But they won't, um, we can't seek retribution for slavery when they had a hand in it and it was all documented. There's, that's unfair. All right, between 1761 and 1774, Lopez was involved in the slave trade. While the secret relationship and the, and the proof of that is Okay, it's a book called by Friedman, page one twenty three to one twenty seven. It says, "While the secret relationship between blacks and Jews describes, so that must be a book. The secret relationship between blacks and Jews describes Lopez as Newport's leading participant in the Black Holocaust. You all see that? He was Newport's leading participant in the Black Holocaust. That's what we call it." black holocaust and that word black is demeaning that word black does not represent who we are we are the real hebrew israelites this is the israelite holocaust the word oh, black holocaust the word holocaust i'm trying to get the word holocaust not black holocaust mm -hmm. holocaust holocaust obviously is a german word it says Damn, you can't even get a simple definition here, man. Let's see it. Mean Holocaust means destruction or slaughter on a mass scale, especially caused by fire or nuclear war. That's a nuclear holocaust. It just means a disaster. A, catas a t catastrophe, as you see here. A disaster or catastrophe. Yeah, Greek for burn. Colleen, who burned. So it does. <laughs> nuclear holocaust it does have to something to do with fire but it's also just a catastrophe slaughter annihilation mass murder extermination which is what happened to our people this is what happened to the negroes at the hands of so-called jews at the hands of you jewish people jewish slave traders right he said newport it says the book says newport's leading participant in the black holocaust you can read more you can find out more from this book Released by the Nation of Islam that asserts that Jews dominated the Atlantic slave trade. 
dominated. All right, the secret relationship between blacks and Jews. Hmm. They call that an anti-Semite book and would try to stop it from being published today. It says, Newport's lead, right, right, right. Historian Eli Faber determined Lopez underwrote 21 slave ships during a period in which Newport sent a total of 347 slave ships to Africa. And Faber, 347 slave ships to Africa. Um, and Faber describes Lopez's ventures in the slave trade as an infe infinitesimal part of the British slave trade. So he was big business with slave trades. According to Faber, slave slaving represented about one tenth of Lopez's shipping business. By the beginning of the American Revolution, Lopez owned over or controlled thirty vessels. So I mean, it goes on and on about this man's doing. His man's uh, doing. Now, if you go down here, Jewish views on slavery. Jewish views on slavery. What do the, what do the Jewish people who call themselves Jews should they believe about slavery? Jewish views on slavery are varied in both religious and historical. Judaism, ancient medieval religious texts contain numerous laws governing the ownership and treatment of slaves. That's also what it says texts that contain such regulations include the Tanakh. So that's what we read out of the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh. Okay. Which are um, where the laws are. And there are laws on ownership and treatment of slaves, both Hebrew and foreign. All right. You know. And there's a difference between a Hebrew slave, a Hebrew owning a Hebrew slave, and a Hebrew owning a, um, a, a, what you call a heathen slave. It says here the Hebrew Bible contained two sets of laws, one for Canaanite slaves and a more lenient set of laws for Hebrew slaves. Right. Okay. So we became slaves under them because they did trade. Now, if you go down here, it says, historically, some Jewish people owned and traded slaves. Right? Jews in colonial America, the book. Let's see if we can read that. Let's see if we can get it. Ha ha. Jews in colonial America. It's all here. Everything you need. Let's read a little bit of it. Let's read a little bit of it. Jews and slavery. Uh, let's go down here. Like their Christian neighbors, the Jews, if they thought of it all at all, consider the blacks as not quite human. Hmm. See that? You see that? But we're supposed to uh, consider them uh, special people and love them. I'll read it again. Like the Christian neighbors, the Jews, if they thought of it at all, considered the blacks as not quite human at best they were a subspecies of homo sapiens thomas jefferson a thinker who was years ahead of others thought of africans as occupying a space between european whites and the orangutan <laughs> so he, <laughs> he thought thomas jefferson the man on your hundred dollar bill it's all about the jeffersons baby thought we was nothing but and when it says Africans, it's talking about the Hebrew Israelites that came over here from Africa. I was dwelling in Africa. That was captured as slaves. Thomas Jefferson thought of us as a, as a, we in a space, we one up from an orangutan. He believed the American Indian could be assimilated into the greater population of whites in three or four generations of inbreeding. Not so the Africans. Yeah, so he said we can breed these Gadites or Yorubanites, Yuru you so-called uh, Native Americans and Seminole Indians, we can breed y'all after three or four generations of indoctrination, but not not you not you niggas, man, not you Africans. It says his hope to create a unified society required the removal of blacks to an area beyond our boundaries. Sally Hemings, not with so notwithstanding. The 18th century was a period of classification and the cultures of the world did not escape classification at the top 18th century, right? At the top of the ladder. So there was no PC culture back then. They were just calling it like, just calling it like it was. They was in full power. Esau was in full dominating power. 
He was taking down nations left and right. And he was able to call whatever people he wanted anything, including uh, Jake's. He was calling us one up from an eight. You see? Because they was straight colonializing the world, man. All right. Taking over. Yeah, man. Bastards, right? So it says here. The 18th century was a period of classification. And the cultures of the world did not escape classification. At the top of the ladder were the European whites. You see? Below them were the American Indians. So we come from this society. America stems from racism. America grew out of racism. To make America great again is to make America racist again. These are the roots of America. The tree is only as good as the roots. What you have now is only as good as what you have. What you have made America out of came out of straight racists. Who saw white supremacists. Who still rule over the country. There's a right to supremacy in office right now. So at the top of the ladder with the European whites. Because the Lord, Job 9 and 24, gave the earth into their hands. To the hands of the wicked. And he covered the faces. Meaning he said he's everybody. He's the Lord. He's God. He's the one called Jesus Christ in the Bible. He's the Israelites. And they took over all customs, man. And peoples and languages and whatnot. It says below them were the American Indians, Laplanders, Malaysians, Chinese. And on the very bottom rung were the Africans. So that's why you have that stigma today. Black skin. Oh, you dark, you nigga. Oh, dark nigga, stupid nigga. That comes from... How the so-called white man set it all up. You know? It says few men in the colonies could finance a slave and voyage. So everybody couldn't afford it. A slaver built to accommodate its terrible cargo had to be owned or at least for a year. The slaver traveled from Newport, Boston, or New York to Africa. See, people say, nah, you know, the up north is down south that's racist. In America, they say that. Now, them down south people, they racist as hell. As you can see here, it says the slaver traveled from Newport, Boston, or New York to Africa and stopped at several forts along the Guinea coast. Sometimes American captains traveled down from the west coast of Africa around the Cape to the east coast of Africa to fill his ship. See, from the west to the down past the Cape to the east coast to fill his ship. There was importing slaves from all parts of Africa then back to the West Indies right Caribbean islands or Charleston that's uh I think it's Virginia if I'm not mistaken to sell off his cargo he might then pick up barrels of crystallized sugar to carry to Rhode Island and Massachusetts the largest distillers of rum he might also carry tobacco for smoke and snuff or snuff the owners needed insurance against a loss at sea or the ship's seizure by a privateer or a pirate during the two centuries of almost constant warfare. The ship's captain, so they insured the ships and the cargo. The ship's captain and crew had to be paid for a year. Provisions for the captain and crew were needed as well as enough calories to keep the cargo alive. Yeah, the slaves, they had to feed the slaves and then go by Uncle Tom. They depict the slave getting his teeth on um, knocked in to feed from to feed them in a through a funnel when they refused to eat they had to keep the slaves alive that's money it says and presented at the time of sale trade goods for the african king was stored on board for the trip east yeah because they traded all right quick scripture let's let's bring out this out now time to get some scripts all right let's get these scripts out give me a second Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Joel 3. Because this is our history. They tell us to forget it. It tells us who we are. We need to know it. Joel 3. And um, start at 3. Yeah, Joel 3. Let's make all 
It says, and they have cast lots for my people. Joel 3 and 3. They have cast lots for my people, meaning we were sold on auction and blocks. And I have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Alright. So, all of these things so that we might drink. They might drink. Who might drink? The people who, the African kings, all right, the Hermetic people who sold us into slavery, who are not all people, but all black. See, you have more than, you have majority of the earth is, has color to them, has melanin to them. They're not all the same people. The Negroes who were slaves were not the same as the Africans who was sold, who was selling us into slavery. So you can understand the Canaanites. All right, the Hamites. All right, so ne the Israelites are not Hamites, both Doxian people, though. All right, so it says they sold us, right? They didn't just come in there and steal us. We, we was rounded up by them Africans and sold to the Grecians. It goes on, it says it. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? These are the Canaanite people, it's Hamites, and all the coast of Palestine. Will you render me a recompense? Meaning, will you pay me back? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return the, your recompense upon your own head? Meaning, you're going to get judged by the Heavenly Father. He's going to judge you because you stole his precious people. It says, because you have taken my silver and my gold. Remember, Israel is likened unto the Lord's silver and gold. So you robbed him of his treasure. And have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. That's us. That's us, good leaving pleasant things. They carried us off. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem. He's telling you what his goodly things is. Children of Israel, children of Judah, children of Jerusalem. Have you sold unto the Grecians? Who are the Grecians? That's where you Caucasians come in. That's where you so-called white people come in. That's where the rulers of the earth, you now you come in. That's where you so-called Jewish people, you come in. You're, you're the Grecians, you're the Edomites, the Idumians. That you might remove them far from their border. Took us off, man. Soulless, man. The next verse, behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them. You see that? The Lord said, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. And the Lord has spoken this. So guess what? For the slavery that we was carried into, they're going to become our slaves. And that's the prophecy of the Bible. A lot of people don't want to deal with prophecy. That's just what it is. You can't get around it. Ain't no running away from it. It is what it is. This happened. These events happened. They was prophesied to happen. And we always prove that. By going to the book of Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 where it tells you and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee so the ships the Egypt again first of all means bondage again the second bondage of our people was in Amer the Americas and the Caribbeans and the in the South America, this Western Hemisphere, where we serve slavery. All right, we went into Egypt again. How do we do it by ships? What are we talking about in this article? The ships. How is we traded? Ships. Let me read on. It says these were predominantly. It says trade goods for the African king were stored on board for the trip east. Right, the wine and the musket guns. These were predominantly casks of rum, <laughs> as well as firearms. Wine, mustard gun, musket guns, rum, firearms. We just read in jo Joel, wine. It says the African leader used guns to go into the interior with the tribes. See how it says tribes? We know there's the 12 tribes of Israel, by the way. Were unfamiliar with firearms. The power of a musket, what's that? A gun, could easily bring him as many slaves as he wished. They gave guns to the African leaders, told them to go in there and get them Hebrew slaves out of there and sell them to us. 
and we'll give you wine. And they went and did it. It says the ship also carried trinkets, mirrors, shackles, and other manufactured goods. So we're talking about a ship here. A slave ship. Once again, back in Deuteronomy 2868. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we was brought into bondage again with ships. So-called Jews don't have this in your history where you went into bondage with ships. You don't have this in your history. You were the ones bringing us in with ships. How about that? Don't want to talk about that part of history. It says, by the way, well, I spake unto thee. That's how the Lord spake it. That's how it happened. And thou shalt see it no more again. See what? We haven't seen Jerusalem again as a people. We haven't seen it, that hemisphere again as a people. We've still been here since these times in the 1700s when slavery began. That's not till that long ago, man. It's, you know, it's somewhere around 300, 400 years ago, man. It's not that long ago we was on them slave ships. Not that long ago. And we haven't seen that the, the other hemisphere since. We've been over here calling ourselves Johnsons. Calling ourselves Braxtons, you know, calling ourselves the Martins, <laughs> the Harveys, all right, giving us these different names, man, taking away our language, taking away all these, you know, slavery, man, we've been serving over here, we, we the ones locked up in these prison houses, man, we filled the prisons up, man, all right, we the ones killing the, ourselves over here. Last high and unemployment is always high for us. Income rate income income is always low for us. Education is always low for us. Um murder rate, crime rate is always high for us. We over here polluted, man. It says and there shall ye be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. We went right to them auction and blocks. Then ain't we didn't come up we like the only people that never they didn't come to America opportunity they came over here to make an opportunity out of us we didn't come over here trying to make it they as as malcolm x famously said we didn't land on plymouth rock <laughs> plymouth rock landed on us <laughs> yeah so they took us and they sold us man the men and women and no man shall buy you Buys old English for sale. Um, I mean, save Salaki. No man shall save you. We weren't. Sa we still here, man. Still slaves. Still slaves. Slave for the dough. Slave for the pay. Took the chain off our hands and put it on our brains, as 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 a song goes. All right. So let's go back into this, man. It says the ship also carried trinkets, mirrors, shackles, and other manufactured goods. Why do they need them shackles? To tie us up. What do they do? They put a yoke of iron on our necks. Where's that in the scriptures? Oh man. That's all throughout the scriptures. Yoke of iron. Them shackles, right? Okay. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. I knew it was close by. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send, shall send against thee. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, meaning yet and in one of all things, right? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Meaning a hard burden, but physical yoke of iron. That's why he carried these shackles, as you see here. Shackles. The word shackles is used here. Okay. It says, the ship also carried trinkets, mirrors, shackles, and other manufacturers' goods. Jews, like the Christian neighbors, brought sl bought slaves' shares in a slaving expedition. So who are we talking about? The people who call themselves Jews should they? Right? They take down our videos because it exposes them, not because we anti-Semites. All right? You're just Edomites, man. We, nobody's scared of you. Nobody's afraid of you. We're just bringing out the truth. This is an old book. This book is documented. It's been put out already. Back when they didn't 
they was putting making us slaves. They didn't care about no anti-Semite when they was buying the shares in the slaving expedition. All right, that didn't matter then. It says if the trip was successful, the return on investment might be a hundred percent. Meaning, if you put in a dollar, you're getting a hundred dollars back. For every dollar you put invest, you're getting a hundred back. Now, if they known to be greedy people, so-called Jews and speaking of, why wouldn't they invest? They would be the main ones. And they were. To the best of my knowledge, Jews were neither captains nor crew members on this nefarious journey. A captain might throw overboard a violent or a sick slave without losing any sleep except over the prof loss of profit. The Jews of antiquity had slaves, but it was a patriarchal type of slavery. The slave worked alongside his master, ate at his table, and slept in his house. After seven years, the slave was freed. In the year Jubilee, 50 years, all slaves were freed. Jewish law and ethics demanded humane treatment of slaves. There was no recognition of the moral wrong of keeping slaves. The Maimonides Codes of Law states that it was forbidden to give document of Manu's mission to slaves of Canaanite descent. The Bible states forever you shall keep them as slaves, but if he is manumitted, he is free. Okay. So there it is. Right, talking about the Talmud. Check this out: the Talmudic slave, the Talmudic law, accepted Jewish involvement in slavery, but the owner was to treat them humanely. He was not to be involved in their punishment. All right, in the Middle Age, Jews were involved in a minimal slave trade. So it goes on. Uh, Las Casas. Right, it says there are limited need for slaves because most plots of land were small. The owner of the serf and his family could manage them. The new world had enormous acreage, meaning plenty of land to cultivate, which would be no, which would later be called plantations, where they would pick cotton. It says so slaves were required. Originally, the Spaniards used Indians, but they died off too quickly. Las Casas, the Roman Catholic clergyman, proposed the Roman Catholic clergyman proposed black slaves slavery to save the Indians. I in the early history of the English colonies, the slave trade was a royal monopoly. The king gave charters to companies for this commerce. There's something called the uh Interricata, a paper bull. Documented by, I think, Rodrigo Borgia, as a matter of fact, Caesar Borgia's father. And Rodrigo Borgia, the Pope at the time, made a charter, a papal bull, saying that Spain and Portugal would divide everything that they found west of Africa. They were to go into their land, colonize it, and whatever riches they had found, they would be it would be divided up between the um the 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 um traders. The merchants and the colonies and the uh the clergy. You know, the 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 Pope was behind that. So as you see here backing it up, Roman Catholic clergyman is behind it. It says the king gave charges to companies for this commerce. Alright? I think British East India Company company was one of these slave large slave trading companies, man. One of the it's supposedly the largest company ever. It says the government in London ordered royal governors to veto any bills passed against the slave trade. Against the slave trade. So they let it go. They let it free. Free roll to make any money off of us. Some areas the government offered bounties to settlers proportional to the number of slaves they possessed. Jews were involved as were their Christian neighbors. So you so-called Jews... Were heavily involved. It says Jews in Brazil, Suriname, and most islands in the West Indies had slaves. Seven years after the arrival of Jews in New Amsterdam, which is New York now, several Jews were wealthy enough to own blacks. Suriname moved back and forth between English and the Dutch. You see? 
on the list of those going to Jamaica, there were 10 Hebrew names. They had 322 slaves among them. Y'all was everywhere, man. All right, here we go. When one thinks of Jews in the slave trade, the names Aaron Lopez and Jacob R. Rivera come to mind. They joined the slave trade in 1762. In the 1760s, the Rhode Island Merchant Marine had 184 vessels and 342 small coasters. Newport was a major trade center and half of its vessels were in the slave trade. As an aside, Newport had more than 20 rum distilleries and predominantly, predominantly supply the industry. In January 1763, Lopez and Rivera sent the brigantine Greyhound to Guinea, where they picked up 134 slaves who were sold in Charleston. 1764, the sloop Spry sent out. In 1765, Lopez and Rivera sent the Betsy in the Africa in the Africa to Guinea. The Betsy carried 1,300 gallons of rum as well as razors and pink knives, which they used against us. You see what I'm saying, man? It's all here. It's documented, man. It's all here. It's documented. So-called Jews' hand in slavery in the slave trade. Before the revolution, Lopez owned outright or was in partnership in 30 ships in the slave trade between 1764 and 1775. Rivera and Lopez had at least one ship constantly active in the trade. In 1772 and 1773, Lopez sent out four slavers to Africa. In 1770s, Aaron Lopez was importing 250 to 300 slaves each year who were sold in the West Indies and in Charleston. All right, enough said. Your, your brothers want to get some more information on this. The book is called Jews in Colonial America. Looks like a good book, man. I'm, I might need to grab this one up, man. Jews in Colonial America. Ah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So there it is, man. I mean, yeah. The first of synagogue in Colonial America was built in New York City in 1730 on the land that was purchased for 100 francs, I think. Plus a loaf of sugar and one pound of bohia tea. The purchase of this land was especially noteworthy because until this time, Jew the Jews had only been permitted to buy land for use as a cemetery. Uh, it's just more on that book. Okay, you can read that. We'll, we'll all read that later, I'm sure. All right. Bear with me. Here's an article um, about, from the YIVO Encyclopedia of Jews in Eastern Europe. And um, it goes into the uh, commercial activity. So commercial activity was the mainstay of Jewish economic life in Eastern Europe from the medieval period until the mid 20th century. All right. It says, however, its significance went beyond the incomes that it brought to Jewish society and helped not only support individuals and families, but also the communal infrastructure for many centuries non-jewish authorities viewed jews success in the field of trade as the very raison d'etre for jewish settlement in europe and that raison d'etre means like reason for living all right i already looked it up raison d'etre right reason for a living as you can see here reason for being purpose it's the reason for existence so they're saying basically that the other nations view the reason for the Jews' existence was for slave trade because that's what they was was slip was trade in general. That's what they known for. They was known for the merchants. They was known for trade. Okay, and other nations saw that about the so-called Jews. It says the support that trade brought Jews allowed them to overcome their neighbors' attempts to exclude them from urban life. Trade was thus a political factor in Jewish social development. They was known for trade. They were, you people were known for trade. You were known to the whole world for trade. You that's what you did perfectly. Trade with ships, merchants. 
It says, in addition, Jewish trading networks important for economic success helped strengthen ties between different centers and so contributed to the development of the transnational elements in East Jewish culture. People that look like this, you know for trading. You're traders of the world. Also money lenders. The vitality of, Jew of Jewish trade over the centuries is best explained as a result of a number of historic factors. These include Jews' familiarity with mon monetary transactions. Right? Oh, you know, but your penny pinches, you know about that. Well, you know, that's called anti Semite term to say that. But what kind of familiarity with monetary transaction is it talking about? I Meaning, you know how to, you know, you, you all about that dollar, man. You all about that bottom line, that dollar. It says, in the Middle Ages, when local merchants were still inexperienced, Jews' economic flexibility. Born of the exclusion from the established economic institutions, the relative weakness of the non-Jewish urban population and the policy of turning the economic services Jews gave the, to non-Jewish authorities into political support. In addition, the widespread strategy of preferring a large turnover with the small profit margins to a small turnover with large profit margins, margins as well as their success in creating and exploiting local, regional, and internal international trading networks proved influential in giving Jews an edge over their competitors. They knew how to get them turn them profits over, man. They is not in it for the for the friendship. They not in it for the for the culture. They not doing it for the for the Instagram. They doing it for that dollar. It's all about that bottom dollar. They ain't gonna mess with you if you ain't got no dollars. It says in later centuries the very extent of the Jews penetration of East European markets gave their economic activity Fundamental importance, all right? Ooh, Kazaria. It says, the first information about Jewish merchants in Eastern Europe dates from about the 10th century. In this period, Jews took part in the slave trade between Central Asia, Kazaria, Byzantium, and Western Europe. You know why? Because they are the people of the Khazarian Empire. They came out of Kazaria, migrating over into um, Europe, Eastern Europe. And this is with the book 13th tribe by Arthur Costa points out that modern Jewry modern Jewry is of Edom the Edomites who ch um, changed their heritage into um, Judea and followed Judaism all right and adopted that the ways of the Jews who are, who are dark-skinned Negroes you adopted their ways practiced their culture all right and spread throughout Europe and called yourself Jews your converts Huh? All right, and that's what it all boils down to. So we all know about how they ended up, ended up into Poland, calling they Soviet Jews of Poland or whatnot. And you know, it talks about money lending, and and then the real money came with slave trade, man. You know, you trade all types of things, but slaves, one of them. You cannot rule that out. That's a people. And you helped for the affliction, the scripture tells you. Jewish merchants, man. Jewish merchants. Alright, so let's pause there. This is Ezekiel 28. Alright, though, yeah. So I'm start at 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, uh, unto me saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord power, because thine heart is lifted up. Thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of the of the of God. And you see, who's the only man that's doing that throughout the earth? It's a main man that sticks out, should stick out in your head. All right. So-called white people, the Edomites, the Edomites of the Bible are doing this. It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. The, the Esau was given a wisdom on the left-hand side of witchcraft, of sorcery, of magic, of, of, of technology that surpasses the wisdom that we have on this side. The wisdom of Daniel, the wisdom of the Israelites. Because Esau, in today's world, you can't we're, we're using cellular phones speaking into them all right we could talk to somebody millions of miles away in the middle of the you know wherever we want at whatever time we want 
be staying in contact with people thousands of miles away. Um, that technology is considered old now. The newest technologies would be like things he could do, you know, ray guns and heat up guns and see through walls and particles and different atoms and splitting and thermonuclear technology. And this is the wisdom of the so-called white man today. It surpasses our wisdom. All right. You know, Jake is responsible for a lot of uh, inventions, but Esau, man, he he's he he owns that patent for the first part. He owns the patent, and then he knew where to take it. Meaning, he done made turn these patents into weapons, and nobody could take them down as far as as far as um, firepower goes. All right, there's no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom. And with thine understanding that has gotten the riches and has gotten gold. And who is who who does this come to who comes to mind here? So called Jews. Because you're great at this this money game. You're great at money lending, as we just read. You're great at uh turning profits. You're great at seeing the bigger picture. And you're better than all your counterparts, other so called white people. You're better than them at that. And you have surpassed them. All the other Edomites. All the other Dukes of Edom. You Amalekites have surpassed them. To be the top of all the seed of Ish uh, Edom. So called Jews. The top of the world. <laughs> you gotta love it right. You would think so. It says and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. It was uh, Amshal. My Amshal Bawa. Or Rothschild. That famously made this statement, I care not who makes the loss just give, as long as I own the gold. Or well, give me the gold and I care not who makes the loss. Because he can just buy them out. It's all about the bottom dollar. These laws is nothing if you ain't if you too poor to if it if it makes you poor. You know, and these laws they just buy out the people to make the laws work in their favor so they can heap up more treasure. And that's what they all about. It says by great wisdom and by thy traffic. You see here traffic. That goes into trade. The top traders of the world are most notably as we just read. You so-called Jews. That's who you are. Matter of fact, the the, the word for it was um your 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 reason for living. Alright? The word the the French word I believe it was. It means it's, they the nations with the, the your own people would see like that's why you're alive. You're alive to do this. You're so good at trade that you must be alive just to trade. And when you watch the so-called Jew in work, work at work, you think, damn, you must be just alive to do this. You know, Jake, we can box. We got different skills. We can rap. We can dance our asses off. We can. We're great comedians, man. We just good at different things. We're great entertainers. Pretty smart and this, that, and the third. But not you, not you, not you so called Jews. You're great at moving money, making money, getting rich. It says, By great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. Slave trade, traffic. All right? Rum, traffic. It says, And thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. And that meaning that. Your riches made you proud as hell. And now you think you can't be taken down. This Your riches deceived you. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the, as the heart of the Most High, before, therefore, will I bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Verse 8, and they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Mm. It says, wilt thou yet before him that slave thee, wilt thou yet say before him that slave thee, I am a God? But thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slave thee. 
Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken to save the Lord God. So we see now that uh, this this king here represents Amalek today, represents Esau today, represents the Edomites today. You 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 people in rulership right now over the four corners of the earth, who by your wisdom and your traffic you got riches and now. You can see the Lord slowly bringing you down. People are waking up to you and the nations are going to be ultimately responsible for your downfall. When they send those thermonuclear missiles and shoot them at your countries. Like how Jerusalem just got hit the other day by a rocket from Palestine. It's happening now, man. We in that time. All right. So in Exodus 17 and... 14 it says and the Lord said unto Moses write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek under from under heaven You know the Lord's gonna do away with you permanently Verse 16 for he said because the Lord hath sworn that the will will have war with Amalek For he said because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So he's constantly going to be on your ass. And that's what, you know, because you warred against Israel, his chosen people, and you had such a great hand and responsibility for putting us in these cargo slave ships, hoarding us off and selling us to make your money. And now you're the top nation of the people of the world, and you think you can't be brought down. Look what you did to the Israelites. So you also stole our heritage and you false claiming. So you are definitely the devil. You're wicked. And uh, you take that PC culture and shove it up your ass because you're not going to make it uh, out of this kingdom alive when the Lord takes it down. All right. And ultimately, you're just going to be done away with permanently, as the scripture tells you, prophecy. And uh, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.